Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be taking a look at a technology preview from Red Hat called the Stratus File System for the rest of us, right after this. Okay, okay, yeah, I made that part up. But it's really an easy-to-use local storage management for Linux that brings in uh, a lot of the same features that ZFS and, or ZFS, and uh, ButterFS provides, like copy on write, being able to take snapshots, uh, also being able to do things like uh, thin provisioning and, and then expanding the file system. It'll even contract the file system provided that you don't contract far enough to lose data. So, yeah, and it, um, it is based out in user land, so it doesn't incur the, I guess, the horrendous penalty of getting something built into the Linux kernel. So it uses Dbus to communicate, and it has two components. And we'll talk about more of those, but the reason why this file system was built was to give us, the regular users that don't have computer science degrees, a way to create file systems that have the same advantages as ButterFS and ZFS does, but it doesn't come with the penalty of having to read and read and read <laughs> uh, mounds of books in order to be able to do it. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, Stratus does support encryption, full disk encryption or full volume encryption as well. So uh, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, you can go out and learn more about it. There's even a tutorial out here if you wish uh, to go through and set it up. It is currently available on Red Hat 8. It's also available on Fedora 32. I did see the package available for Arch. I did not see the package available for Debian and Ubuntu yet. And I, I suspect that's because of their philosophy about you know systems being stable. Stratus reached, uh, well, we'll talk about all that. We'll, we'll get into that, I guess. Uh, there's no point in jumping ahead. So it's an easy to use local storage system for Linux without having the, to just have your head spin and try to figure out all this advanced stuff that ZFS does and how to make it work. Uh, and the, it reached its first stable release in June uh, 4th. And, I mean, Stratus hasn't been around long. It started, I think the first appearance of it actually showed up in October of 2018. So it's pretty young <laughs> uh, in comparison to uh, ZFS, which is almost, what, uh, uh, 15, 16 years old, somewhere around in there. And uh, ButterFS, of course, has been around for about 12 uh, so, yeah, it, I mean, it, they're trying to incorporate some new things into it, uh, like, all right, let's, let's take, so first of all, the Fedora 32 has 2.0. They don't have the 2.1, and I noticed from the website they're looking at 2.11 now, uh, being out to patch, looks like an, a bug they found with encryption, so. But it provides a, a managed file system on top of pools. So, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys have tried to develop, de delve into LVM very much, but you can get lost in all that, right? I mean, you've got physical volumes, you've got logical volumes, and, and then you got the then you got the magic, the, the, uh, the, L, the logical volume on top of that. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, a pain to try to set up. It's a pain to try to manage. It's a pain to try to do much with it. So this is trying to do the opposite. This is trying to bring that level of technology down and make it simple and make it easy. So uh, enable enables you to manage snapshots. You can do things like thin provisioning. So what the heck is that? So, I mean, in the past, whenever we've created file systems, we have to create them as large as we think they'll ever need to be. Whereas um, in, in uh, file systems like Stratus, you can, you can pick a number and of what you think you'll need to use right now, and then you can expand it over time because you can add additional space to it. You're not locked in. Like if you've built a uh, ext4, for example, you're stuck. And the only way to, the only way to, you can expand it, but it isn't easy to do it. Uh, XFS, same thing. You can expand it, but it, I mean, they have an XFS grow file utility, and I've had some success with that. I uh, can't say that everything has been successful with that utility, uh, but it is not easy to do. Uh, and this is really meant to be able to expand and shrink, provided you don't you don't uh, encroach upon 
uh, data that you know, to make it so small that it starts to lose data. It has a built-in protection for that. So yeah, I mean, but that I, I just can't imagine that that's in the real world that we're going to be shrinking our file systems very much. It seems to me that it's just the opposite. We're always needing to expand them. Uh, as the adage goes, uh, disk space <laughs> fills, <laughs> uh, see, files fill all available disk space in one year. So yeah, that's that's kind of what that is kind of the trend. So <clears throat> there's two utilities. There's two things you need uh, for uh, Stratus. First, you need the Stratus daemon, which is uh, written in Rust. And I'm, I'm really glad to see that because Rust has some very good memory protection and it's a much improved uh, uh, compiler, which is similar to C, but it's better, way better than C. So yeah, I'm glad to see them using Rust to do that utility. And that manages all of the things about writing to the file, setting it up, creating the pools, uh, getting the devices uh, put together <clears throat> and so forth to form the pool and then to mount it. And then you have the Stratus CLI, which is the interface that you use in order to, to tell the daemon to create these things and to expand these things to encrypt the pools or take snapshots of the pools and those types of things. So, yeah, as I said, it's a technology preview, which, which means don't use this in production. Use it with caution. It hasn't been fully vetted. Not fully tested, you know, you, your risk is yours and all that stuff. So, but I'd, if you wanted to play around with it, yeah, that's what technology previews are for, is get to know it and learn how it works. So I could tell you, I could expound on all these great ideas and I could tell you my opinions and that would be probably worth nothing. So they also have their place in politics and public speaking, but that's not how we do things in engineering. So let's do some engineering. Let's put this thing to the test. I know it's an early release of it, but hey, you're gonna put it out there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hammer on it. So let's do some benchmarking on it, and let's put it up against ButterFS. Let's put it up against ext4, and let's put it up against XFS. I mean, it claims to compete with those and, and is trying to replace those. Let's see how well it does. Now, I'm going to be using a Proxmox workstation. Uh, uh, Fedora, I'm going to use Fedora workstation on Proxmox. That's not my ideal environment. I would prefer to use the, the, the NUC for this, but it's in use. I can't, I can't just go and obliterate what I'm working on uh, for the <coughs> hardening demo, so I would have to start over. I don't really want to do that. So uh, I'm going to create a storage pool on, the, on a crucial MX300, so one terabyte SATA SSD. So it's not NVMe, uh, and I need to come back and once I get the NUC done and do a, a benchmark on NVMe, uh, because usually that is where you stress these modern file systems. NVMe will show up all kinds of problems with them, uh, whereas SATA SSDs, they generally don't run fast enough and hard enough to really create issues for these, so I need to come back and do that. I'm also going to only use 4 gig of RAM, and the reason for that is I think that's going to be fairly typical for a workstation. I'm really looking at this as a possible replacement for my XFS file systems on, on Fedora. I currently use XFS today. Um, I do use some EXT4 as well, uh, but for the most part, it's XFS. <clears throat> so I want to try 4 gig. I really want to see how, how buffering affects and how much how memory affects the performance of these things. And I am going to be using a tool called IOZone. And IOZone is a file system benchmarking tool, and it's very good at that. So that's what I'm going to be <clears throat> using today to actually kick the tires, and let's go do something with it. IOZone has a number of, of ways that you can run it. Uh, you, you can, you can, it has a number of inbuilt tests. You can select one or more of those. You can select all of them. Uh, you can randomly go through them. You can have it build up uh, and scale up a workload. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to run through all of them, and I'm going to scale my workloads from one simultaneous I.O. up to five. And the reason for that is that typically in a laptop situation, you'd probably be doing one, maybe two I.O. simultaneously. But as you get into workstation workloads where you're compiling and on into the low-end servers and maybe office servers, you're going to find a lot more simultaneous IOs going on to those file systems. And so I want to see how well it scales, and I want to see how well it would do as a server as well. So I'm going to kind of push it a little bit and see how well they, they respond. But on the low end side, I also want to see how the overhead of the file system affects performance of the system. 
because that is telling uh, when you put these on workstations and start to use them to do casual things. So yeah, so let's start out. So the, I have four groups here. The green bar is XFS, the yellow is Stratus, orange is the XT4, and blue is ButterFS. So as we go through, I'm gonna build up my workload. This is one user, and of course my numbers didn't show up here. But there's this uh, one, one workload simultaneously. This is two, this is three, four, and five. And, and you'll, you'll probably, and this is the initial write. So initial write would be, I'm putting down a file for the first time onto the file system, and then I've got to incur the overhead of creating it, allocating the uh, space in, in an SSD in, inside the block of memory, or also I have to uh, wait for the uh, SSD to heat up enough so that it can write into that space, and then I have to update the inode tables in order for the file to actually be uh, searchable in the directory again. So, and there's also metadata that gets updated as well, and how much metadata is dependent upon the file system and the type of metadata it captures. So, as we can see, ext4, yeah, it kind of plugs along. Stratus has got some overhead, looks like, and then so does ButterFS. And XFS is doing quite well here for these size workloads, which is the reason why I prefer to use XFS. But uh, ButterFS apparently has some, uh, has some, and I've read this before, that there's the copy on write overhead that usually affects lower workloads. But when you start getting into workloads of two simultaneous IOs where you have overlapping, then the copy on write overhead becomes less of a factor. And you'll see it start to accelerate. And the same happens with Stratus. It also accelerates because its copy on write overhead is being negated by the fact that I have overlapping IOs. So, uh, and then there's some funny stuff that happens here. I mean, uh, ButterFS is doing okay, but Stratus seems to be dropping back. XFS is kind of slowly scaling up, that's kind of what it does. Uh, and, it, and once we get up into four, it's kind of on par, sort of. It's close to what ButterFS is doing, but ButterFS is really pinned up against the performance of the drive. So it can't really accelerate beyond what the drive is capable of supplying. When we get up into five, then XFS starts to roll off, and so does so does uh, Stratus. So and EXT4 kind of rolls off anyway, but EXT4 isn't real high performance in this kind of a scenario anyway. So enough about that. Let's move on. So you got reads. This is just a traditional file read. Start at the front, read it serially, uh, and we see the same kind of behavior down here. With one workload, we have some issues. Now, I don't know why copy on write would be an issue there, other than it's probably updating the access time on the file uh, because you are opening it. And so there are some, there is some writing that takes place to, to say, oh, they, so that file got touched. But, uh, yeah, and so we kind of we scale up slowly on all of them until we get to four, and then everybody's kind of peaking. We get up to five, XFS rolls off again, but Stratus is running up against the, the performance of the drive. So both of these are kind of hit a hard wall with the hardware. So that's good, right? That's what we want. Uh, this is rewrite. So this is, uh, <clears throat> this is taking and laying down a write on the file and then turning around and rewriting it again. And what this is trying to find out is, if, is there any caching that's involved in it? Now I have caching turned off in Linux, but this caching would be device caching that's occurring. <clears throat> So we kind of see the same patterns again. Uh, one user workload, we've got overhead at two, things start to bring to come up. Stratus comes in into its own at three and then kind of falls back again. But you know, and there's some falling back here with uh, ButterFS as well, but not very much. This is the same thing as the rewrite, except it's going back and doing a reread on the same area that it did before. Same pattern, we, we, we see it kind of scaling up, but they're all, they're all doing well at four, and then XFS kind of rolls off again. So let's go on and look at reverse read. Now, you might think this is kind of funny that we're re reverse reading the file, but believe it or not, there are some compilers that do that. And so that's why this test is in here. Um, <clears throat> again, same kind of pattern. I mean, we peak up here and everybody's doing great. <clears throat> Uh, at this lower workloads, looks like we're still having some, we're still having some overhead issues here, uh, and then we really peak when we get up to the, the five. So, 
the, the individual workloads are not able to saturate the channel to the drive, is how I read this, until we get up into the higher level workloads. Uh, stride. Stride is basically, it's 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 jumping in the middle of the file. It's going in this particular test. It jumps it jumps 200 uh, kilobytes into the file and then reads a 4K block. Jumps another 200 kilobytes forward, reads a 4K block, and then just keeps doing that. So that's a stride read. Uh, typically, that would be like a database would be doing that, uh, where it would be jumping based on the index pointers into the data and then reading portions of it out to uh, supply the uh, select statement. So, so these kind of workloads are, are meant to, to be a synthetic for database type of, of reads. It could also be ISAM, uh, which I don't know how much of that older stuff is still around, but there probably is some of it still around. We see the same kind of pattern, though, here where in the lower level workloads, we're just not able to get up to the channel speed on the drive, but once we get into four and five, yeah, we're, we're pinned. And our poor friend EXT4 is just struggling here with these workloads. Uh, random read is just randomly reading data out of the file. And, and again, that would be database. It could be, uh, it could be ISAM. It could be, I don't know how many people are still using random file access, but there's probably some that still would prefer to do it that way. Uh, same kind of problem here. We see the same issues as before. The lower level workloads are just not able to get up <clears throat> to the channel speed that we'd expect to see with that device. Now, mixed -like workloads, this is read and writes kind of occurring at random. It doesn't do a read and then a write or a write and then a read. It's mixing things up and it's kind of uh, pushing things around. So uh, the lower level, we kind of see XFS is doing quite well up until about the three. And then Stratus kind of comes into its own at, at uh, three simultaneous users and then uh, ButterFS takes over the lead and Stratus starts to decline at five along with XFS. So XFS is doing pretty good here too. Random writes, <clears throat> same as random reads except it's jumping around to write data in the file. They, they all do pretty well um, with uh, Stratus jumping back just a little bit here. Copy on write probably coming into play there. <clears throat> a little bit, and probably there's, I mean, I am seeing a little bit of sawtooth. Now, I'd have to run this more fine-tuned to really see that. <clears throat> As I've said in previous videos, that's usually an indication of something blocking. So, yeah, when you see sawtooth like that, that's usually an indication of something that's blocking because you wouldn't expect that if Stratus was, was pinned, at this workload that you, you would see it increase suddenly at a higher workload. You wouldn't expect that. Uh, P reads, <clears throat> this is a uh, Linux library called that does uh, offset reads uh, into the file. So this is fairly common uh, to, to use with utilities inside of Linux. Um, so this would be pretty, I, I guess it would be, if you're using a lot of Linux utilities, this would probably be pretty common. Fread would also be pretty common as well <clears throat> in uh, in Linux. So, um, yeah. So we see the same thing. It's it's kind of chunked up down here until we reach the higher level workloads. Uh, P write same kind of thing, except you know they're taken off at two on the P write. So the overhead of copy on write is being. Uh, you know, and it's being uh, hidden by the fact that we have overlapping IOs going on. This is also an offset write into the file. We have uh, fwrite, which is also a library call uh, in Linux. And uh, in this case, this is a buffered write with blocking. So, uh, so we would expect as we get into higher workloads, the performance goes down because the blocks come into place to prevent the write, makes the write wait until the previous one clears. <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's what's going on here. So, uh, yeah, so at the uh, one and two level, <clears throat> ButterFS is doing pretty good. At the first level, XFS kind of way gets dropped off way fast at two. But ButterFS suddenly craters here. Uh, EXT is going is doing a lot better, uh, but of course it's that was this is the era it was written in, so it's kind of optimized for this. Uh, and surprisingly, Stratus is doing pretty good too. Um, XFS has dropped way back uh, from its initial, 
but it is improving here a little bit. So this could be blocking. Uh, of course, with this read, it this right, it would be very possible that the blocking was causing an issue for it. But Stratus seems to do pretty well at four and five. These are typically <clears throat> these are typically not high performance workloads when you get into using the same file. But it's really meant to show that you know that 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 some syst file systems struggle more than others. Uh, XFS and I, it does quite well at this because remember it was it was originally written by SGI for 3D rendering. So yeah, you would have a massive number of writes going into a file server, uh, and then the file server would be distributing the workload out to other rendering machines and then pulling back that. Uh, completed work that those machines did to form the next frame in the movie. So yeah, that's how those systems work back then. F reads, this is also a, a buffered uh, read and it's respecting blocks in the file. Now I wouldn't expect this, since we're not writing at the same time, I wouldn't expect to see any blocks being a problem, but ButterFS is clearly struggling here with this workload. And these would be common uh, in in the, if you put this on your Linux file system, these would be common issues that you would run into uh, because of the way <clears throat> the Linux utilities are written. So, um, yeah. Uh, and of course, the EXT is doing quite well here, but that, again, was what it was written for. I'm surprised to see uh, such a young file system doing as well or if not better than XFS. The Stratus is really holding its own here. So clearly they are writing this to handle the system workloads of Linux. So yeah, uh, it's clearly doing pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about the results we, uh, in that particular benchmark anyway. I think we can agree EXT4 is the slowest here. I, I don't think that uh, <laughs> that, that was, uh, it's, it was a shining example of performance. Now, XFS and Stratus, I, I have to say, is really a toss-up. Um, the only reason why I knocked XFS down to third was because of the performance at the, at the highest levels. It folds pretty quickly. <clears throat> and whereas Stratus did not issue that, it did not see that kind of uh, problem for the most part. But I think we have to agree that ButterFS performance was number one overall. It, it would peak and it would stay in, hang in there. Uh, however, uh, for laptop and workstation workloads, ButterFS performance was poor in comparison to the other file systems, like particularly XFS and even Stratus uh, <clears throat> in some cases. So... I, I suspect that that's copy on write overhead, but I don't know. Could be some other issues with some of the benchmarks, uh, but <clears throat> it seemed to really struggle at the lower workloads. So here's what I would recommend. If you're putting together a server, uh, ButterFS probably right now is your best bet uh, because it, it really handles those kind of workloads very well. Uh, but I would not necessarily want to use it in my... Uh, as my default file system for Linux, uh, simply because of the type of, of calls that Linux does to files <clears throat> uh, would not be uh, the best choice for ButterFS, particularly if your system became busy all of a sudden. So I would experiment with it. And I mean, I, I don't, wouldn't go necessarily solely by what the benchmark says. You, you want to really go see how it performs the way you use it, but I would expect that as your workload became busier, you would suddenly see a drop in performance with it. Um, for workstation work levels, I, I mean, XFS, of course, is stable. It's been around. It works. And so I, I have a tendency to recommend that. EXT4 is good, too, um, for the server portions of Linux. Uh, and as really the reason why it's still the default file system for Linux. But Stratus, I'd keep an eye on. As this progresses uh, and they get more features into it, <clears throat> I think this file system has a lot to offer. And I, I really like to see, I mean, I, the group that's working on this is knowledgeable of file systems. They're knowledgeable of Linux. They know what they're doing. Uh, and they seem to be doing a really horrendous job and un making an undertaking like this. Uh, and I like the fact that I, I don't know what the advantages of Dbus will be over time using that API, but 
anything you can do to stay out of the kernel development team's hair, that's probably a good thing for to get your uh, file system up and running quicker. So I don't know what their long term will be once they get all this development working, whether or not they'll try to apply and get it into the kernel. I haven't seen any long term plans for this yet. I mean, they're kind of they're just trying to get things working and start to build in things that, with new features and. Uh, uh, I, I got to say, it, it's for as young as it is, it's impressive. Uh, it really is. I have never seen a file system come up quite that fast, other than maybe one other. Uh, and, and that was just because the guy that wrote it was a genius. And it, of course, was Riser at FS, but we all know what happened with that. So um, with that, I think, I, uh, I think I'll end this today. I hope you enjoyed this video on an, on an, interesting, uh, an interesting approach uh, to a file system using uh, the latest in what we understand in technology and using uh, the latest kinds of compilers to do it in. Uh, so I hope to see more about Stratus in the future, and if, I, if as it progresses, I may come back and do updates on it. I definitely will do updates on it on hardware once I clear the box that I have. And I'll try to redo the benchmarking under that as well. Hope to all see you all again real soon. And uh, please like and subscribe. And bye for now.